FedEx owns the largest air cargo fleet in the world. Wow, but did you know? To save the company from dying, the founder bet on the fate of the company and made the tables turn. Stick with us as we reveal all about it. You might even learn about the optical illusion hidden in the world-famous FedEx logo. An idea as simple as overnight delivery services received a C on paper, but opened many doors for the founder. And today he is one of the richest men in the world with an impressive net worth of $5.3 billion. Frederick Smith was born in 1944 in Mississippi. His father passed away when he was just four years old. However, Frederick's father had left the family his life's earnings, well enough for a comfortable life. As a child, Frederick suffered from a disease which caused the temporary loss of blood supply to the hip. Therefore, most of his childhood was spent with the support of crutches and braces. Fortunately, this little boy's inner strength was fighting back. By his 10th birthday, he had won the fight against the disease and had gained back his health. Upon completing his initial stages of education, in 1962, he enrolled in Yale University and graduated with a bachelor's degree in economics. During an assignment in Yale, he wrote a paper on urgent delivery services and he received a C. His professors were not much interested in the idea and did not know that later become the success among many rival delivery services. Aviation electrified young Frederick and he became an amateur pilot. Later, he served for three years in the US Marine Corps as a platoon leader and Ford air controller. In 1969, he was honorably discharged with the rank of a captain. I do not believe I could have built FedEx without the skills I learned from the Marine Corps. FedEx did not begin as a courier service as it does today. FedEx, according to Fred's business plan, would pick up checks from 12 Federal Reserve banks in the US, fly them to a central hub, and then deliver the checks to the Federal Reserve member banks the next day. He pitched the idea to the Federal Reserve, which approved it. Frederick purchased two Dassault Falcon jets from Pan Am using personal savings and a loan from his family trust fund. The Federal Reserve directors later changed their minds, leaving the company with no client, two Falcons, and $3.6 million in debt. Compelled to revisit his plans instead, he decided to create a service that provides time-sensitive documents for businesses and consumers across America. In 1971, he purchased controlling interest in Arc Aviation Sales, an aircraft maintenance company. Coupling up his inheritance worth $4 million with venture capital worth $91 million, he founded Federal Express Corporation in Little Rock, Arkansas. The company was heavily financed and had a record-breaking sum of money in the history of US venture capital. Two years later, they moved from Memphis and they were growing with 389 team members and had officially begun air delivery services, reaching 25 cities in 14 Falcon jets, delivering around 180 parcels a day. Three years after its inception, the company was in the verge of bankruptcy, losing $1 million per month. In fact, within the first three months, Frederick had lost much of his initial investments. Costs incurred with severe advertising and increasing price of fuel. FedEx was in debt, losing much of its funding. No investors, no bank loans. One Friday, amidst the threat of bankruptcy, he traveled to Las Vegas and played blackjack. You may wonder, what was he thinking? Well, it was the last $5,000 of the company as he was denied being provided for more funding. $5,000 is inadequate to run operations. The extremely risky win or lose situation ended up in a win. He managed to flip the $5,000 and earn back $27,000. He went back to his life's work and invested the money to sustain his business operations. The $27,000 was not the moment of a comeback but for Frederick, it was a sign. He thought to himself, things may just get better. The motivation led him to generate a further $11 million in funding. No business school graduate would recommend gambling as a financial strategy, but sometimes it pays to be a little crazy early in your career. Years later, in 1976, Frederick made his first profit in business, $3.6 million. By this time, the company was supervising the delivery 
of 19,000 packages on a single day. Federal Express was thriving in the industry. IBM and the US Air Force were among its 31,000 frequent customers. By 1978, the company went public. Following the new outlook of the company, they expanded significantly. $65,000 packages on a single day delivered across 89 cities in the US. Into the 1980s, Frederick was keen to capture the global market and acquired Jelco Express. The acquired company was serving in 84 countries and soon opened gates for Frederick to enter the global scope of operations. In 1988, Frederick's determination to enter the overseas market proved successful in the acquisition of Flying Tiger Line, the United States' first scheduled cargo airline. Therefore, opening doors to a new platform of recognition, the biggest full-service cargo airline in the world. The acquisition allowed Federal Express to own 22 Boeing 747, 11 Boeing 727s and 6 DC-8 aircraft. Soon, Federal Express was often referred to as FedEx, as we know it today. Financial troubles were diminishing but strong competition from UPS was rising. Both companies have covered similar tactics and strategies, including overnight delivery and ground delivery. However, UPS's discount scheme was consistently attracting FedEx customers. Fred addressed the issue strategically. What did he do? He comprehended that the nature of business is never constant. Customers' needs will change and it's only a matter of time till his company begins projecting promising savings, reliability, speed and efficiency. He also understood the importance of the internet and the significant impact of e-commerce on the future. The biggest part of our business has always been moving things, not paper. With the internet, people in Mississippi can buy things from Macedonia without regard to time or place or quantity. To support his predictions, he established a partnership with SunData, a web-based company which ensured a rise in the customer base of FedEx through sales conducted via the internet. Along the path of its success, FedEx became a holding company in 1997, FDX Corporation. By the beginning of the next year, Frederick had acquired Caliber Systems Inc., a company in the transportation and logistics industry. Ever since then, FedEx has actively acquired multiple companies in its wave of acquisitions and recesses. If you've reached this far of the video, thank you. Please like and subscribe for more inspiring business stories. Now for the moment you have all been waiting for. What is the meaning behind the FedEx logo? The logo is simple, easy to understand with clear letters and reads the word FedEx. But look closer, do you see an optical illusion? Between the letters E and X, there is a white space. If you look even closer, it is an arrow representing the company's core values, delivery, accuracy and speed. The company has achieved a vast amount of success ranging to every corner of the earth. They began operations delivering about 180 packages a day. Today, FedEx Corporation is globally known with delivery reaching more than 220 countries. It proudly holds ownership of more than 1,900 FedEx Express stations, more than 2,000 FedEx office locations and more than 680 aircraft serving in 650 plus airports, delivering an average of 16.5 million packages daily. Have you ever delivered a package using FedEx? Let us know in the comments. Catch up with us in the next one. See you soon.